Yes, Virgil, this is your food right here. You're about to get down and eat this. You start your morning with some good water. Get that good H2O. <laughs> So typical training morning, you wake up on a Monday, today is Monday, you're about two weeks away from the fight, getting ready for this big fight. Um, so what, what is the first thing you do? Eat. <laughs> Eat good food, That's right? First thing, uh, yeah, uh, my chef here, uh, he makes uh, food, he makes really good food, and then uh, we go already to the gym like at 10, uh, it's like 30 minutes away, so we gotta leave by 9.30, which means I gotta be ready by 9, which is here a little bit. Uh-huh. Um, and then I do conditioning at the gym, like right after training. And then we'll come back home and we eat lunch, let the food go down, and by the time it goes down, it's like 5, 4.30, something like that. Then we go to, to the beach, and then we run. So this is an all-day thing. All-day thing. The practice schedule is really busy. Wow. Chef Juan, uh, name some of the people that you work with here in Los Angeles. Well, I work with different kind of, like I've worked with famous entrepreneur, uh, Ty Lopez. He's a, a, an investor that usually talks about entrepreneuring, about investing in homes and everything. He's like a millionaire, so I pretty much work with him. I work too uh, with Carlos. He's one of our entrepreneurs, a photographer as well. Uh, I cater for his, for his event with uh, his friends, Jessica Alba. Uh, as well, we got to, I got to cater for two, um, one of the, the granddaughter for the JFK, uh, the Kennedys. It was pretty much I exposed different artists that I worked in the past, like from Jessica Alba, from Carlos, uh, uh, what is it called? The podcast that comes on that um, Ryan's in Secrets with, uh, with uh, what's your name? I blank that right now. No, está bien. Es que cuando eso pasa cuando fumas mucha marihuana. Dale cara. I've always invested in my son. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always invested in my son. You know. Uh, when my son was growing up and you know I was I was young, I was like growing up with him, you know. I only had pretty much two pair of pants, mm. three at most, and I always wore white shirts, you know, because you white shirts is the cheapest pack to buy, right? I remember DMX when you said <laughs> buy four, uh, buy get one free, you know. Uh, so uh, the reason I was always like that because I was always investing in my son. When I mean investing, that means I was buying him the best gloves. If it mean I, I could eat for I don't know how many weeks to buy him the glove, I'd buy him the gloves because the, his hands were the most important thing. You know, my son used to tear up shoes. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, he used to go through shoes. Mm -hmm. I know one time I bought him some shoes and he went through them in two weeks. And I was uh, like, um, what the fuck? Like, and, and, and like these shoes ain't, you know, they're going literally through through to his bottom of his foot because he's pivoting so hard well, when he's you, shooting. Don't you buy him a bigger size or is this, it wasn't about the size? It wasn't about the size. It, 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 the, he was just eating through the shoes because, you know, you know the as work. you're punching and all the footwork. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, again, I always invested in my son, you know, and right now, you know, I got him, we have a personal chef, uh -huh. uh, you know, I, I have Hector here for two weeks. I, you know, I fly him here for two weeks. I have Fiegel here who, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've helped him get a fight, you know, under uh -huh. Virgil's undercard uh, to help him start out his pro debut. Uh, but not only that, but he also helps my son too, as in just him being around. Being just around. him, because uh, uh, we don't have too many friends. We don't go out and stuff like that. So him just being around, him have somebody uh, uh, run with him. Little bro. Yeah, you know, little bro. Right you know, when... somebody who, who, who yeah. wants it. He's young, so he wants it real bad right now. I say he wouldn't later. But he's gonna do everything Virgil does. So if Virgil runs and he pushes. He's gonna want to push it just with same him. Thing. So that's something that you need. Yeah. You need that same energy. So you know that that's you know we have him and and uh, again it, it's this isn't easy. This isn't easy. This is a business and and you gotta provide. And uh, so again, if you want to perform, you gotta keep them happy. Well, this is uh, you're definitely investing into something that you definitely believe in and you just it, to you is this kind of like this is this is really pretty much all you have this is something that you got to go 110 percent. you don't have another job this yeah is, this you, is it. you don't have, look you have to go all out and i mean i mean you have to go all out again you, you're mentioning this house you know two months for me to stay here it's pretty much cost me twenty thousand dollars 
it's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really thought I would be spending two thousand dollars. I mean, twenty thousand yeah. for two months. That's a lot, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, Maori, that's a lot. Uh, but I'm fully invested. You know, when whenever I told my son I was gonna go ahead and train him full time because I, I he needed me mm -hmm. and I needed him. Yeah. You know, we've been together this whole time. You know, think about it. I've been at my job for 10 years, man. I mean, Maori, well, I can't tell you Manny. Manny, because you work with Manny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I've been at my job for 10 years. And, you know, that's job security. That's job security, you know. I roll the dice and I, I, I tell my son, you know what? You're, you're, I made you a promise when you were born that I would take care of you. And I gotta, I gotta go all the way. So I quit my job. The next day, fly over here, stay with him. Period, and just, and just doing it all the way, not knowing. And, and here's the thing: is like every father believes their kid is the best. Every father, I don't care who it is, your kid could not fight worth a lick, and you think he's the best. It's just the way it is. You know, and I know how good my son is. I always know since the amateur, he's always been ranked number one in the in the country, and, and he's just been very, very good. And even then, there's still a lot of kids that are number one, and they still don't do anything. So for me to roll the dice and go all in, Marty, mm. and not even know what we're going to do, if we're going to make it or not, that's that's going all in. I mean, I had a job for job security. I had 401k. I had all, you know, whatever. And I didn't make much because, you know, I, the job that I took, it, it didn't pay me much, but gave me time to, to train my son, right? The, the, mm. the right time to train my son. So you do that. I mean, you're rolling your whole life. Here's here. Think about it like this: What if I do? What if I do this? I've been training my son since he was five, and we're at this point right now, and my son's no good. I wasted. Remember, you only live once. I then you could look at it like this: I wasted my entire life Oof. from here to here. Now you could wouldn't say wasted like that because you know I just yeah. kept him out of trouble and it's like. Yeah. But financially. When I could have had houses already, could have had nice trucks, I could have, when I was just driving the same thing over and over, I didn't have anything. So I basically struggled from here to all the way here for nothing. We didn't even do anything. There's a lot of people that go through that. A lot of people. And mm -hmm. to be in the position that my son's in, do you understand how many people are, are in my son's position right now? One person. And that's only him. Yeah. So to be in that position in the entire world, this is the world. Yeah. There's only one planet. Yeah. And, and and how many God knows how many boxers are there to be in this position? It it's it's not even you couldn't even say hit the lottery because people hit the lottery every day. Yeah, this is this is very 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 rare. Yeah. So again, you know, we've worked hard to be here, and I don't mean it. You know, five days a week. I mean every day, Saturday and Sunday, every day. Yeah. Why everybody's partying every day? You know. So we've he definitely has earned his. Mm -hmm. But even then, it's still not guaranteed. So you have to, you have to do everything to make sure you're giving yourself the best chance to win. Everything. And that mean, if that means investing all your money, and you believe like that, yeah. then you then you do that and, and do your time. One of the things that Vikings used to do, they used to, the way they used to conquer the enemy, they used to, you know, get in the ship and travel like 30 days to get there. And then when they get there, they will burn their ships because losing was not an option. Yeah. They were going to win. So They're pretty, all in. You're pretty much the Viking. You're pretty much that guy saying, a toda madre, un desmadre. Hey, I'm, I said, I'm not burning my car. I'm not going to the gym. No, like, you're we're gonna win. Yeah. no but, you know, it, it, it's true. I mean, I, you're pretty much, you're rolling the dice. Yeah. I mean, how many people would roll the dice just to take a chance? There, there's not very many. No. Some people would rather have their job and, you know, and, and, and have their weekends off. And in boxing, you don't have weekends off. Mm -hmm. Here, here's another thing. You know, not only am I rolling the dice on, 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 on all this, but my kids, I don't get to see my kids for months, you know. And you have other kids besides Yeah, them. so yeah. I don't get to see my other kids. So, you know, that's hard. My kids are growing up without me. You know, it's it's something that you you miss Christmases, you miss birthdays, mm -hmm. you miss, uh, uh, you know, Thanksgiving. You know, when everybody's family's together, we're not. We're we're training, and and again, you know, some people don't understand that all the sacrifice and work you uh, put in 
there's a cost to it. Yeah. Why? And then they, you know, and then everybody wants, oh, he needs to be doing this, he needs to be doing that. Why everybody's up? Why you guys are doing that? We're doing, you know, more than our part, and, and it, it's hard. It, it, it really is hard. This sport is, this sport is the the sport that always tells the truth. If you work for it, mm -hmm. and if you're cutting any corners, it'll show. It'll show. It'll show. Yeah. You want to tell me what you're doing? Oh, uh, these gloves are wet. So, from a lot of sweat. So we try to air them out. Yeah. So they don't stink. And they're not wet tomorrow when you use them. And, uh... And the good uh, Palo Pinto air helps it out. Yeah, you know those nice swollen things right here. Ah, just a shoe dryer. Nice. Nice. How worried are you about this great fight that is about to happen? Every fight is. Uh, it has to be uh, a little nerve-wracking, right? Because you just never know what you get. Kind of like football, any given <clears throat> Sunday, right? Right, any given Sunday, yeah, that's true. But I know, I feel like we're just works real hard. So, I mean, we know what we have. Uh, we know what he brings to the table and, and he never disappoints. Um, he works at 100% all the time. So I'm not worried or, or, or anything. Um, I have a lot of confidence in him. Mm -hmm. I think he's gonna do his thing again. Virgil Ortiz, uh, you know, it seems like every time I come over here and visit your your camp, it seems like he's getting bigger and stronger. Uh, you know, is, is this the type of fighter that can transcend like a Canelo? I, I believe so. I think he has the work ethic like Canelo mm -hmm. does. Um, he might not have the experience yet that Canelo has, but I think in due time, uh, he's definitely has the ability to be that type of fighter. Well, he can hold on to that weight and then still pack a good punch? For sure. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. He, he's, he's solid. He hits hard. He works hard. Uh, obviously, a lot of it comes from his technique and, and, and just, you know, natural power. But, yeah, mm -hmm. I believe he can carry his power up to another weight class as well. Working with uh, the Ortiz uh, team yeah. and having those guys here, I, how do you see Virgil Ortiz seeing him firsthand here well, in the gym? First and foremost, uh, uh, you know, we are a part of our, of our environment. Uh, uh -huh. I try to create a good environment in my gym. My gym, I make it feel like your house. Yeah. Everybody is, once you set foot in the ring though, you know, it's, it's, it's time to go to work. Everybody's after the, pretty much chasing the same goal. Uh -huh. So you got to put in 100%. If you don't, then you're cheating the sport. You're cheating yourself so everybody works hard that's awesome but with respect though we're working hard but everybody everybody respects one another coaches respect one another the people people like yourself yes sir people respect everybody amongst fighters because mm -hmm. like i said we're, we're in a tough business as it is so let's 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 learn to get along let's learn to create a good environment a good respectful environment and, and know that when you come into the gym and you, you know, we want to make you feel like you're like you're you're part of the gym like you're yeah this is your house you know what i mean and we mean that uh, and then having a uh, uh, having a Virgil and having his dad here, Hector, Figo, make them feel the same way, man. Make that them feel like awesome. they're part of the family, and I think I think that uh, uh, they feel that way. Mm -hmm. They're comfortable. They're happy, and uh, that makes me happy when everyone else is happy. I really do. I I, I, I really go try to go out of my way, not just for them, but for everyone to make sure that everybody, first and foremost, they get what they're looking for, which is good. Good quality work, good good sparring, a good gym, a good setup, you know, and it's a small gym, it's, it's un, un gimnasio pequeño, humilde, sencillo, and pero es tu gimnasio. There you go. So make it feel like you're home. What would you like to do after boxing? Uh, I want to do a lot of things. Yeah. I want to learn how to cook. Uh, I want to dive deeper into music and mm -hmm. actually dedicate some time and get better at the guitar yeah. or the music period. Um, what about family? How many kids do you want to have in the future? I don't even want to think about that right now. <laughs> oh man, I have a sister right now. She has three kids. You don't even think about kids. She has the kids. All you do is move right in, take care of her bills. Okay, no, <laughs> I'm kind of forcing it. I'm sorry, sister. 
Virgil, we uh, we appreciate the time. We always love visiting you, and uh, from all of us here, uh, we support you and we love you. We want everyone to encourage you to go watch this fight. Support this man. Get your whole family. Have a Friday night, a Saturday night watching party, and enjoy some good fights. We're gonna expect a great match. We got uh, Figo on the undercard. It's gonna be a great night of boxing. Is there anything you want to say to the people before we get out of here? Yeah, uh, especially to the fans in you know Grand Prairie Dallas area. I just want to say thank you for you know always having my back. You know, and uh, they and it means a lot. It means a lot just to, I think, be an example yeah. for the young ones. You know, it's, uh, I really didn't have an example. Uh, my dad was my hero growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, as far as like a, a boxer or, I didn't have a big brother. I was the big brother, you yeah. know? So I didn't really have anyone else to look up to besides my dad, you know? My yeah. dad's obviously my parent. Yeah. Um, but I hope that I could be, you know, that guy, that that example, yeah. that the good example, most most importantly, yeah. to uh, to those young kids coming up, and I hope that I can motivate them to awesome. do the best in whatever they do. Yeah. Speaking of that, there is a, another fan that wants to give you something. Give me one second. I'm okay. gonna bring something to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can rep. The GP product situation gear. What's his name? Merchandise. His name is Luis. Hey, Luis, I thank you so much, man. I'm, I'll be wearing this for sure. Yes, sir. I really like it. Yes, sir, man. Thank you. We appreciate you and always supporting uh, the community, and we wish, wish you nothing but the best. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir. Thank you. This video segment is sponsored in part by Eminem Staffing quality employees to help your business grow. Call us today. Also sponsored in part by My Car Wreck Guy. Hurt in a car wreck? Call My Car Wreck Guy now. Call 214-308-SAS. And from our good friends at Situation Gear. Follow them now on Instagram, Situation Gear.